Dr. Francisco Balda graduated as a dental surgeon in Madrid with a master's in periodontal surgery. With 14 years of experience as a surgeon, he has spent the last six years working in guided surgery. In fact, he has dedicated the last four years devoted to guided surgery in his dental practice in Guadalajara. As an expert in this matter, Dr. Balda lectures for BMB Dental and is a frequent collaborator in our webinars. Traditional surgery has long inspired dental surgeons with workarounds or time-honored techniques for difficult procedures. Dr. Balda's presentation of guided surgery will demonstrate how technology not only prepares doctors for surgery with a digital workflow, but may indeed become the standard for any dental procedure. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to Dr. Francisco Balda. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Francisco. I come from Spain and I've been working there for 14 years. And today I'm going to explain you uh, what is our workflow in the guided surgery in our day to day. So I asked myself when people from BNB told me to make this, this speech, uh, why we use wider surgery? And the first benefits I think it gives to me is fewer visits for treatment, shorter visiting times, and improve the quality of treatment with shorter times. So we make all our protocol based on a very simple idea. The prosthesis tells the implant where have to be, and the implant tells the prosthesis how have to be. So all our guided surgery is going to be planified around the final prosthesis. So for this purpose, we have a workflow that it's first of all, we make the digitalization. After that, we can make a WhatsApp. After we can make the planification using the WhatsApp. And finally, we can make the surgery. So now we are going to explain which is the workflow and how we obtain all information in, about the patient. So the first step is the digitalization. What we do, what we call for digitalization is to take all anatomic structures from the patient and translate it into a language that our BMB software is going to be able to understand. So we have a a patient and we need to take all this information into a digital model that we are going to be able to manipulate. So we are going to use two kinds, we are going to use two kinds of files. The first one is DICOM file. DICOM file gives us information about the bone and low resolution about the tooth and STL files. Maybe it will depend on the scanner that you are using, OBG or ply files are, are used too. So what anatomical structures should we digitalize? We need to digitalize three anatomical structures. The first one is the bone. We obtain it with the DICOM. The second one is the soft tissue. We obtain that with the intraoral scan or maybe a conventional impression and high resolution uh, information of the, of the dental surface. We use intraoral scan or conventional impression to, to, use the, to obtain this information. So the workflow for the digitalization is the next. If you are using conventional impression, you will need to take the impression. After that, you have to make the digitalization. But if you are using only an uh, intraoral scan, the two first steps could be done just in one. After that, we will need an X-ray positioner. It's not obligatory, but it's a very important step. So later we will speak about it. We need to make a CVCT to obtain the bone information. We need to design an alveolar model the alveolar model is only needed if we are going to make any extraction during the surgery. Because the morphology of the mouth is going to change, we need to, uh, to suppose how it's going to be after the extraction. 
and of course the WhatsApp, because all the planification of the wider survey has to be made without WhatsApp. So, normal impression, we can take it, as I told you before, with conventional system, just taking an impression, extraoral scan, and after that we have the SDL. Or if we are using intraoral scan, we just directly obtain the SDL in the moment. Dicon file is a really simple step, but we have, we have to be sure that the scan, the scan is correct, the image is clear, the safe. And if we have used an X-ray positioner, we have to see that the, it's, well, it's correct position in the mode and don't move during the, during the scan. So with all this information, we have to take this information and upload it into the software. But when we get all this information into the software, we will obtain something like this. It's because the bone and the STL, the DICOM file and the STL are not in the same place. So we have to move the STL around the DICOM to could obtain something like this. This process we call it to alignment. So we have to align the STL to the DICOM. To could be able to make a, a good match or alignment, we have to make two or to have in, in the mind two ideas. We need to have enough, enough dental surface and non-scattering daikon, because if the patient has some metallic parts in the mouth, there will be too much noise and, and some scattering. If any of these two rules are broken, we won't be able to make a direct alignment between the STL and the daikon file, and we will need to make an X-ray positioner. So, uh, what does enough dental surface mean? In this case, we have to say that position is more important than quantity. So the best places to have a good match are molars and, in, and canines. So give them five points. Like you see, uh, no. We give to these places five points, and the rest of the teeth, we give two points. So we have to see the mouth and add all the numbers that we have in this moment. For example, we have this, so we have five points and five points, and the rest, two points. So totally 22. Dial alignment is possible because we have more than 20 units. But if we have something like this, we will have five points, five points, and 18. So like it's under 20 surface units, we will not be able to make a direct alignment. So we will need to do an X-ray positioner because all this area has no anatomical reference to we'll be able to make a good alignment. So. The other thing I told you in the rules before is that we, if we have a scattering daikon, this is an example, it's the same patient. You can see here it's too many noise, so we are not able to recognize any, any anatomical surface, so we cannot make a direct alignment. So we will need to use, in this case, too, the X-ray positioner. So, as I told you before, if any of the rules is broken, we must use an X-ray positioner. And these are the characteristics for, a, for an X-ray. We need it to be relucent and trailing as the part where we are going to use a smart. Like you can see here, this is a 3D printed X-ray positioner. It's completely relucent. as the these marks that are radio packet. It has at least three reference points and have the best possible fit dental structure of soft tissue. It will depend on the case. So here you have the image. We obtain this in the daikon. We can see here the X-ray positioner is radiolucent and the radio package marks that we are going to use 
to make the alignment. In here you can see the initial STL and the alignment of the X-ray positioner. In this case, we use always 3D printed X-ray positioners. And there is another kind when we have no teeth in mouth, the mucus supported. Time ago, we started to use this kind of X-ray positioners that is like a denture but have the marks, like you can see here. But now we are using 3D printed ones, like you are seeing here. It's the base is completely radio packet instead of the teeth. So we obtain in a daikon animates like this. You have enough surface to could be able to make the alignment and not make a scattering in the daikon because it's hollow. And even we use it to make the guys splint. So we have the teeth here. When we are going to put it into the patient mode, we tell him to bite and fix the guided splint. Well, this is the case you have seen before. This is the planification. And here is the result. So you can see we can obtain good results with this kind of x ray positioners. Uh, as I told you before, just to remember, if we have 20 units or more, we have non scattered icon, like you can see here, we can make an direct alignment. We don't need X right positioner. But if we have not 20 units or we have a scattered icon, we will need to use the X right positioner to make a good alignment. So this is the, the, the workflow we use here. After that, we need to obtain the alveolar model. The alveolar model is the result of, you can see here, this is from Asuri, that we are going to meet the extractions, and we are going to make this model. So one of the benefits of the B&B software is this is a real case. We are going to make the structures. So in the software, we can segment the teeth and make one uh, Boolean operation with the STLs between the initial model, that is this one, and the STL teeth and obtain something like this. This is the model, alveolar model, and we, are, we have a model for could be able to make the provisionals. Like you can see here, we can print it. We can export and print the, the model. You will see that it's like this. And obtain with the same teeth, we can obtain the STL and mill the provisories, the provisionals. So now it's time to planify. We have all information to could be able to make the planification. We have the WhatsApp. We have the, the bone, the CBCT, and we place the implants. So it's time to take it into the mouth. This is the initial. This is the day of the surgery. And this is three months, uh, two months sorry, later. So you can see we can control the soft tissue in this case. We have two different types of diagnostic WhatsApp. If the case is easy, we can just make it directly in the software. So I mean, when I said easy, I mean it's one piece, uh, a little bridge or something similar. But when the case is complex, we prefer to make the WhatsApp in a lab. So this is a real case. For example, we have the superior part, inferior part. We have made digital extractions. So we can make the WhatsApp. Here is our prothesis prote prote planification. And now we can planify the surgery. We make it in the same day. We have the inferior arch, the planification, and the superior one. The same, we have the WhatsApp, so all information needed to could be able to make the planification of the implants. And now it's time 
to take it into the patient mode. So we started with the inferior art. This is the surgery day, and this is one week later. In the same day, we make the superior part. We made the structions, we made the provisional. This is the surgery day. And here you have one week later. So we can control the soft tissue. This is the X-ray result. In this case, we use Anolon 4 system inferior, Anolon 6 superior. The posterior were angulated. This is our uh, the, this is our, work, uh, our workflow for the prosthetic process. First of all, we made the digital impression with markers. We scan the provisories in mouth too. So now we have all information about the patient. We have the markers, we have the soft tissue, we, and the men, vertical dimension and occlusion. This all is done in the same session. Even we make this, we take out the immediate load from patient in the same day. We make the passivitation. So in the same day, we have all information to could be able to, to make the final prosthesis. So in all four system, it's very important because we can use the new line of drills of B and B that are a 16 and 18 millimeters that allow us to make this kind of surgeries because I think it's, I don't remember exactly, but I think it's, it's 14 millimeters, but there are too much distance between the soft tissue and the placement of the implant. So we drill to 18 and use transport plus four to insert the implant. But the most important thing in this case is that in the software we have all information about the development and this is really uh, really nice because we can angulate the implant and we will know when we are calculating it where is going to be our screw channel and this is possible because of the the software has all the implant library movements and you can decide which one you want to use. So, for different cases, we will need different SDLs. This is just an, an slide to have in, in the mind. Is for example, if we have more than 20 units surface, as I told you before, and I'm not speaking about it, and no scattering daikon, we are not going to make questions, no immediate reload, we only need the initial SDL. But, it, in the same case, with no extraction, it would make immediate load. We will need the initial model and we will need the WhatsApp. If we are going to make extractions, but not immediate load, we only will need the initial model and the alveolar model. If we are going to make an immediate load, we will need the initial model, the alveolar model, and the WhatsApp. And if we have less than 20 units and or scattered daikon, it's all the same process, but we will need to use the X-Y positioner STL2. For the rest, it's the same STL, because the process is exactly the same. Now we are going to, about, to speak about the planification. In, you, to make it better, I would like to speak about this case. We are going to make structures from canine to premolar. And we need to take all information into the software. The workflow in the software is, first of all, insert DICOM, insert STL, so a lot, a lot if you want to say, mark nerve from structure, to insert the WhatsApp or design the WhatsApp, make planification, and finally, we have to de design the spline. So we started with DICOM. In this case, we have a bridge in the front of in the incisors. So we have an scattered DICOM. We need to use an X-ray positioner. So as you can see in the image, this is the patient. 
we have to insert daikon, orient daikon, and remove all unnecessary anatomy to don't disturb. So you can stay here, here, here. Well, if I can move it, we will see more, more marker points. Because the, this daikon, the, the patient is, is, taking care, is taking the extra right positioner. So after that, we need to insert the STL to blow up the STL. And the case, just to remember, less than 20 units and scattered daikon, that is what we have. More, sorry, more than 20 units and scattered daikon. We are going to make extractions and we are going to make an immediate reload. So we need to have the initial STL, the DICOM with an X right positioner because of this. The obtain the alveolar model because we are going to make the immediately load. And of course, always the WhatsApp to could be able to make a good planification. So now it's time to align the STL X-ray positioner with the DICOM. So it's very important to understand that the DICOM is always static. It's the STL which is going to move to the position of the DICOM. So in this case, we have the X-ray positioner. Here you have the marks. And they are here, here, we can see in the daikon too. So the alignment is too easy because we just mark these points and move the STL into the daikon. So when we are making alignment with next right positioner, first of all, we make the, the alignment with the STL of the X right positioner to the daikon. But we can make after that with the MPR views of the software we can make the fine-tuning alignment. So we have to see the initial model and adapt it or move it around to make the fine-tuning alignment. And as you can see, the results are very good. It's very aligned. So now it's time to mark the nerve. In this case, we have no nerve, but so we can use it to mark, in this case, the, the palatal artery to be sure that we are we leave a distance from our implants and the palatal artery. And the WhatsApp, as I told you, it's a, for me it's a complex case, so I prefer it to make it by a dental lab. This is the case, and this is the alveolar model with the WhatsApp. So now we have all information to could be able to make the planification. Now it's time to start to design the surgery. So these are the points where we are going to put the implants. We planificate these points. We are going to use four implants of 14 and transport four. Just tell you in this point that it's very important to understand that the final milling sequence is different from conventional surgery because of this. The, the, the drills for while the surgery are longer than con conventional, they have an inactive area that have two parts. One part for the sleeve, who is going to guide the drill, and one part for the gun. Yeah. Is the transmucosal part. In total, it's nine millimeters. So we can use for the same side of the implant, for example, for an implant of 10 millimeters, we can use as final, as final drill, drill, we can use 10, 10 millimeters, implant 10 millimeters, we use transport plus zero. But we can make the survey too with the drill, it will depend on the, on the anatomy, but we can use the drill of 12 to insert an implant of 10, 10 millimeters, but we will need to use the transport plus two millimeters. At the same time, we can use the drill of 14 millimeters to insert implant of 10 millimeters. So we have more distance here. We are uh, putting our implant deeper and using a transport plus four. So here you have the image. 
implant 10 millimeters, drill 10 millimeters plus zero. Here is the, the implant. But as we increase the drill and the transport, we make our implant to move deeper. So we can control where we want, where we want to be our implant. Now it's time to design the white splint. So it's very easy just to mark the splint in the STL. In this case, we are going to make extraction, so we have to design the guide splint over the uh, alveolar model. So we obtain the STL that could be exported and print the white splint. This is a 3D printed white splint, and now have all information to go to the surgery. We have the model, 3D printed model, and here you can see the immediate load. So now it's time to go to the surgery. This is the initial, the initial picture. We make the extractions. After that, we place the implants. As I told you before, we use drill. The implants, I remember, is 14. Uh, so we use the transport plus uh, the drill 18 and transport 4. These two lines means that the transport we are using is plus 4. So after putting the implants, we have to test our immediate load. And after that, we can cement it. And this is the result in the surgery day. So the why the surgery benefits on my day a day. The first one is the surgery precision. So we can identify anatomical structures and we can prospect it when we make the surgery. Another one is that we can angulate, we can make angulation in the implants, like you can see here is the sinus, the palatal uh, wall, okay, and we can insert the implant, control the angulation, this is for anolon 4, this is the sinus wall, and we can stay very near from the wall, but not get into the sinus. And, of course, when we have critical situation because of the, of the little space or distance from never, we cannot take good results too because it's very accurate. So, another benefit is to control the, the soft tissue. In this case, it's an incisor. So, three months later, we obtain something like this. This is a lateral, this is in simple cases, but at the same time, we can make the same in complex cases. So we have initial case, we planify, as I told you before, all the surgery. We have the alveolar model, we have the WhatsApp, so we can obtain something like this. this is the model, this is the PMA, PMMI, the um, provisional, and this is the picture the day of the surgery. So we can control soft tissue from the first day. This is another case. It's a full arch, superior full arch. We have to, take, to make extractions. So we obtain the alveolar model. We design the immediate load and make the surgery. In the picture, it's in the same day. Some blood in the picture, but I think it's okay. So, reiterative workflow. I mean that this kind of workflow could be able to be used in any situation. So, in this case, we are going to make a full arch, superior full arch. So, we make the uh, x ray positioner in this case because only have one tooth, one molar. We need to make the DICOM file biting the x ray positioner. So we make the X-ray digital 3D printed X-ray positioner. We obtain, we obtain, well, first we obtain the STL, made the, over this STL, we made the X-ray positioner. After that, we have the WhatsApp. And now we have all information to could be able to planify the surgery. So it's time to obtain something like this. You can see here, this is the guided splint. This is the immediate load and the alveolar model. 
we always use the same the same protocol because it's it's fast and easy to to care. Now it's time to take it into the patient mode. This is the picture in the surgery day. We put eight implants and immediately load. And this picture is in a week. So as you can see, we can start to control soft tissue from the first day. To make the final uh, prosthesis, we use always the same workflow too. In the same day, we try to make all the prosthesis in only one day. We make all inf we take all information about the patient, scan provisional in month, scan bite, we scan markers, we scan mouth. Now we made the pacification with the with the immediate reload and send all this information to the dental lab so they can do the final prosthesis in just one visit and one step. Maybe sometimes you will need to make another test or similar. But we can obtain good results because oral implants are planificated using the, always, we use always the same WhatsApp from the beginning of the case to the end. Even in the simple cases, this is just, we use this protocol, we scan the mode with markers, we obtain information, and use the white splint to make the pacification. Instead, in this case, we have no immediate load, so we take the guided splint and make the pacification. So again, we have all information to take, to send to laboratory and make the, prosthetic, the final prosthesis. Even in the complex aesthetic cases, we can obtain good results. This is a patient. We obtain the SDL, made the digitalization, so started as always. We have the digitalization. Now we have to obtain all the rest of the information. Okay, so we have the initial model. This is a, a crazy case. Here are the canines, the laterals was palatal, and the, the incisor too much too vestibular. So we made the digital model extractions, the alveolar model, sorry, and over the alveolar model, we design the WhatsApp, is here, and now we have all information again to could be able to make the planification and the wide sprint. So now it's time to take it. In this case, as I told you, we are going to put two implants and make immediate reload. So we have this, is initial features, well, initial STL, and this is the day of the surgery in the, with the immediate load. So we make the structure, place the implants, and this is the result that they, no, I, I think this is two weeks after the, the surgery. Maybe, I don't remember. But here is the result, so no, it's done. So another benefit is the alveolar model. For me, it's very important. It's the, the most important thing in the treatment to, could be able to control the soft tissue. Here is the case. We have to make the, the incisor extractions, the four incisors. So we always the same treatment protocol, initial planification with the WhatsApp, obtain the alveolar model. This is the, the model. And over the alveolar model, we design the PMA professional. So now we have all information to make the surgery again. So this picture is the surgery day, and this one is two weeks later. So you can see we are controlling always the soft tissue. Another benefit is a predictable final result thanks to immediate load. This is an immediate reload one month. This is the same immediate reload three months later. It's not exactly the same because sometimes we decide to make more pressure in some, in some, in some areas. So we uh, dismount the immediate reload, put some composite here to make more papilla here. And after that, we can take impressions and obtain the final result in zirconia. In wider surgery, we can make, as I told you before, cases for uh, 
like you can see here, it's an all on four, superior all on four. We can control angulation because we will know always where it's going to be or more angulated and we can make the immediate reload in this patient and again control soft tissue from the first day. Another benefit is that how we can control the angulation of the implant, like you can see here, we can avoid some anatomical structures, we can angle them and use multi-unit abutments to correct the final position of the implant. In this case, here is the sinus, so we decide to put the implant anglet, like you can see here, this is the, the implant, and the yellow one is the more anglet that we can check it because we have the library on the software, and correct the final position of the channel script. So this is the radiological final with the zirconium prothesis, the anglet distal implant, and the, uh, the parallel first. And the guided surgery could be used with other technicals. For example, when we make a bone regeneration, this is the, the bone defect. So we decide to make first the regeneration. After six months, we place the implants with the wider surgery. And with the same prosthetical protocol, we use the, the wider as passivization. We can obtain the final result in Triconia. And nothing more. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Muchísimas gracias. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Francisco.